Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Today I thought I would share with you some of my squash picks for the 2023 season. In front of me here I have a sweet meat squash that I grew last year and I've stored. And today I'm actually going to be cooking it up so that I can get the meat out of the inside to bake into some muffins and loaves. This is an autumn frost squash. Absolutely beautiful squash. Again, I grew this in my garden last year and it's been storing inside uh, since I harvested it. These are the only two squash that I have left from my uh, squash that I harvested in the fall. Um, I really enjoy squash and so I eat a lot of it. I do have a little bit that's left in my freezer that's cut up and cubed. Um, I have, I believe, some autumn frost squash and some celebration squash in my freezer right now. When I freeze it, I just cut it up. Uh, like I peel the, the squash and cube it. Of course, I take the seeds and pulp out. One of the ways that I prefer to eat squash the most is to roast it. So if I just have those cubed pieces in the freezer, I just stick them in a freezer bag. Then I can pull them out, spread them on a baking sheet, you know, and oil them up, season them, season them however I like, and pop them in the oven. And it's really quick and easy way to get some uh, roasted squash going. Squash this size is more than enough for myself and my husband, so I'll usually cook half of it up one night and then put the rest in the freezer to have it another time. I've been going through my squash seeds and I have a huge container full of them here, but I'm not gonna be able to fit them all into my garden this year. I love squash, I love pumpkins, and sometimes I over order <laughs> and get a little bit excited, but I just simply don't have room and I have a pretty large garden. So that's something to take into account. If you have a small space, then you need to be careful of what uh, varieties of squash that you are going to be growing. When you're ordering your squash, if you have a very small space, you might want to stick to squash that have a more bush habit or compact bush habit or maybe even a compact vining habit. A large squash plant can use almost 30 square feet of uh, garden space. So that's a lot of space to give up to one plant. Now there are ways that you can combine planting them with other things to make that work out and growing them vertically can really help to uh, give you that little bit more space. And that's what I do with mine. But I also like to find compact varieties whenever I can. There are two different uh, kind of types of squash that you'll see when you're purchasing uh, your squash seed or purchasing squash at the grocery store. And one is the more summer squash and one is uh, winter squash. So the summer squash is the type of squash that you want to be harvesting through the growing season. The, the uh, skins will be easy, easily pierced with your uh, fingernail and yet they're ripe inside and ready to eat. They will not store well for you so the summer squash that I generally grow is zucchini. That's my favorite type of summer squash to have. And this year I'll be growing the uh, onyx, which is a really dark green summer squash. And I'll be growing sunstripe. Sunstripe is a gold zucchini squash with yellow striping on it. These are both bush varieties of squash and they fit easily into a gardening space. They'll still take up around two square feet or 60 square centimeters of space. The rest of the squash I'll be growing is winter squash and now pumpkins fall into that category as well. So I have my pumpkins. I'm only growing a couple of varieties of pumpkins this year. I'll be going through them with this a variety of winter squash. So the winter squash is the type of squash where you're going to be growing it throughout your summer season. They usually take like 75 to over 100 days to mature and uh, they'll get nice coloring on their skin and when they're fully mature you can't easily pierce the skin with your nail and they will store for you for a long time. So I harvested these I believe mid-October and they're still going strong and we're coming up to the end of January. These could still store for a few more months. They're both looking really good. There's no soft spots or anything, no bruising, no nothing that's going to have them spoil on me. And they've been doing a really good job in my pantry, which is a little bit cool. Some winter squash will store longer than others, but these two varieties um, are reputed to be great storage squash and they have held up very well for me. 
some winter squash will only store for around four months or so. So it's good to kind of research your squash if it's something that you're wanting. It's nice to have squash that can store just like this and not have to be taking up uh, canning, you know, pressure canning or anything or freezer space, things like that, you know, that can be at a premium. If you can just have a nice cool area, then that's a good thing for them. I think they're supposed to have something like 55% humidity for storage, but I don't really worry about that and I haven't had a huge issue with squash storing for me. I have a couple of new winter squash that I'm gonna try this year. The first one is called Syrian Hollis. This is te technically a type of pumpkin and it's grown primarily for the seeds. The seeds don't have that hard outer covering on them that most pumpkin seeds do. And so they're supposed to be really good for harvesting the seeds. They're supposed to have a plentiful amount of seeds in them. Harvest really well so that you can save those seeds and roast them and enjoy them that way. And pumpkin seeds are very nutritious and a great thing to have on hand. Uh, you can roast them and then store them and use them uh, you know, in salads or just to garnish dishes or just to snack on, put them in your trail mix. So I'm really excited to try these and I'm hoping that I can get some nice pumpkin seeds uh, to be enjoying and providing for myself instead of buying them at the store. This is also supposed to be a pretty decorative looking pumpkin. So maybe I'll be able to get a couple uh, just to have out for decoration. Now, I've also been hearing lots about these baked potato and mashed potato squash, and so I just had to get my hands on them and try them for myself. The mashed potato squash is supposed to be a compact, compact vining squash, so it takes up a little bit less space in the garden. And this one is supposed to be a white uh, flesh inside squash that uh, gets really fluffy and is very uh, similar in texture to mashed potatoes. So it's very white, very fluffy. Uh, the the uh, flavor has been described uh, as more of a cross kind of between a regular mashed potato and like a sweet potato. So it has a little bit of sweetness, but not as sweet as a sweet potato and a little bit of nuttiness. And that's what people say. So I'm really interested to try this. It'd be nice just to have something that's a little bit different. And then to accompany or I guess try is the baked potato squash. So this is a tan squash. The mashed potato is white on the inside and out. The, the baked potato is supposed to be kind of a brown tan color on the outside and kind of an orangey brown color on the inside. And it is supposed to have a real nutty flavor to it. Uh, they say it re resembles like a peanut or a baked potato, hence the name, and the mashed potato because of the texture. It looks like mashed potatoes. So the, none of them are supposed to taste completely like a potato, but they are supposed to be a good low carb substitute for potatoes that people like to use. So it'll be fun to try these and see what I think for myself. My husband isn't a huge fan of squash, so I thought these two varieties being just slightly different than your average squash might appeal to him more. So we're gonna give him a try. The baked potato squash is a compact bush variety, so it needs around three feet of space but it won't vine out all over your garden like some other varieties of squash do. So the next squash that I'll be growing is some more of this autumn frost squash. I grew it for the first time last year. I absolutely loved it. And I was able to grow these gr pretty good sized squash on a trellis. And that's always nice because some squash are just too big for that. And this one grows easily up a trellis. It uh, held the trellis, the squash didn't break off and it was nice to have that way. They're a really pretty squash to have in the garden and they store really well. They're one of the most delicious squash that I've had. So I'm really, I've really been enjoying these. And in fact, when I cut this one open, I'll be taking the seeds out of it. I think it was growing far enough away from some of my other squash that I should be able to get pretty true to variety seeds out of this. And there's not a lot left in this package. And that's the trouble when I grow all my squash so close together. A lot of times saving the seeds would just give me some kind of Frankenstein varieties that I don't wanna be trying out when I want a specific variety. So this is definitely a vining variety of squash, but it did work well on a trellis that was about two feet wide by about five feet tall, and it grew really well for me that way. I'm also gonna be growing these beautiful sweet meat squash again, provided that the flavor is as good as I've heard it is. I actually have not yet tried this squash. This was the only one that I got that to maturity last year. 
and I have been saving it because I wanted to see how well it's stored. But this is supposedly the type of squash that is used in a lot of the canned pumpkin pie fillings. So it's not true pumpkin, it's actually usually a sweet meat squash. That's the rumor, I have no way to prove that. So don't, uh, don't run around saying that I said so. But it's supposed to give you a superior pumpkin puree flavor. And that's the thing I found when I grow my own pie pumpkins. They can have almost a watered down pumpkin flavor, whereas this is supposed to give you that really rich pumpkin flavor. So I'm really hoping to get that out of the squash. And this is a good sized squash, so I should be able to get quite a bit of puree out of it to use in multiple things. So I'm looking forward to growing this again and hopefully I can get a few more squash off of it. Where I had it last year was in a perfectly sunny location. So I'm hoping if I get it in a better location this year, I'll get even more squash off of it. Definitely a vining variety. It needs lots of room, but I did have this on a trellis and uh, it was on a trellis that was against my fence. Some of them were caught between the trellis and the fence um, and some of them just developed down on the ground, but they actually held the trellis fairly well and I was impressed because this is a heavy squash. So then I'll also be growing the renegade pumpkin. I always like to have a few pumpkins just for kind of jack-o'-lantern pumpkins and this one I think is a good selection for that. So I'm going to be growing this one. It's just a nice orange kind of standard pumpkin pumpkin and it gets a good size this is like a 15 pound kind of pumpkin size they don't always get that big for me but sometimes again that's the growing conditions when you're jamming them into a tight space they don't always perform up to their full potential but definitely a vining plant i'm also going to be growing the rouge vif de ton now this is a pumpkin that's supposed to have kind of that dark darker orangish red color to it I believe this is also supposed to be kind of like your Cinderella style pumpkin that's kind of wide and flat. So it's supposed to be highly decorative. I have tried, I think two years in a row now to grow one of these and I still have not figured out what the trick is. This is a very long maturity date, but it's supposed to be the same maturity date is a sweet meat squash. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with these because I'm not getting pumpkins but I'm gonna give them another try because I really would like to have some of these pumpkins. This, this is just a small selection of the squash that I have seeds for that I would love to grow. So I'm gonna give you a couple of other smaller squash varieties that I think are worth mentioning in case you're looking for something smaller just to, to have maybe just for a small couple or if just yourself that you like to have, to have squash to enjoy. And uh, these are great squash that I've grown for years and I just decided I didn't have room in my yard this year and I was going to make room for trying out those potato squash and that meant some things had to go. So the potato squash are a smaller squash so I took out some of my smaller squash that I normally grow. So the first one would be the East Elite squash and this is a, a green small squash. I'd say like, I don't know, probably like two to four pounds at most. Let's see if it says two to three pounds. Read the package, it'll tell you. <laughs> so this is about a two to three pound squash. It's a nice deep dark green color. It is a buttercup variety of squash and it has a drier texture. But this is a squash that matures quickly and I believe the uh, potato ones do as well. So this is one that will actually mature fast enough that you can be eating the squash kind of around like mid to late summer and enjoying them before some of your other longer season squashes are actually mature and ready for eating. This is a vining squash. It does take some space, but I think maybe because of the, the size of the, the fruit on it, it didn't seem like, it seemed like it was easier to kind of stick in around other things. It doesn't get quite the huge leaves on it that some squash do. So it won't shade out plants in the same way that other squash do. So you can kind of grow it in amongst other things and it'll, it'll do well. This grows quite a few squash on a plant. And like I said, they're small enough that they easily hang to a trellis. So this is one that I do like to have on a trellis. Another one that I really like to grow and enjoy and another squash that matures fairly quickly so that I can be having some, you know, in that lid, in that mid to late summer time is celebration squash. Now this is another acorn type squash and it gets, 
orange and yellow and green striped. Every single one has just a little bit different look to it. It's a really nice squash. It's a pretty fairly pale yellow squash inside. It's not, you know, some of the dark orange squash will kind of stain your cutting board in that a little bit. This doesn't do that. It has a little bit more mild flavor. I think that's maybe because of the color. I don't know, but it's a little bit more mildly flavored. Again, I would say these are probably like in the one to three pound range. They're a smaller squash for sure. Uh, and they have, they're a little bit moister in texture than like your, that, that East Elite being that these are an acorn squash. They're very nice, smaller leaves and smaller fruit on the vine. So again, they can be tucked into areas. You can grow them around the edge of a flower bed. You, you know, just put them in the corner and let them wrap around. As long as they're getting good nutrition, you can have things in the bed around it or up a trellis and they'll work well that way too. I really enjoy these. And I do have a little bit of this left frozen in my freezer cubed up. So I'll get to have a little bit more this year. And then I'm going to try and forgo them for, for next year. These two, these are two varieties that kind of got me on squash and I really enjoy them, but I want to try some other varieties. So I'm going to have to put them to the side. These are also quite decorative. Uh, so lots of times I'll even put a few out, even if they're not quite right if i have a few fruit that have set around my first frost and they're maybe not quite ready to actually eat they're still usually quite pretty and they can be put out into fall displays they'll usually last long enough for me to do that so speaking of decorative squash this is one that i wouldn't recommend eating if you like to just have small squash to have on hand for display in autumn then these uh, baby jack mix pumpkins are great so these, uh, these are from Vessies, but I think you can get this kind of baby jack mix of different types in a, a lot of different seed shops. So this one, particularly from Vessies, has orange and yellow and white. And there's also some that have some striping to them as well. And it's just a mix. You never quite know what you're going to get, but they uh, grow quite well. They're, you get quite a few usually off of a plant. And they're just a nice tiny little size. I think the biggest I've ever had was, you know, probably a pound. They're not really an eating squash. They will store though. Like I've had them and just taken them just to see what would happen and just had them on the shelves in my grow room, which is not ideal a squash storing uh, situation. And they, they kept until I just threw them out. They would never got rotten or anything. So they do store quite well. I've never tried to store them from year to year to see if they would dry out inside and like a gourd and you could use them that way. But they, uh, they're they very nice and nice and decorative. So if you're, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for is to use, you could hollow them out to make little, um, like t kind of little mini pumpkin bouquets or little candle holders, or just to tuck a few in, you know, into your autumn display or across your table for Thanksgiving or something. The Baby Jack Mix is a great pumpkin for that. And again, if you're looking for something that's uh, more decorative than edible, then look for some gourds. You can get some really fun little gourd mixes that will give you some small decorative gourds. And you can have those, they do dry out. You can save them and use them for displays. The same same idea is, you know, putting them all across your table, tucking them into your, your autumn displays or you know hollowing out a little spot and putting a little candle in them if you have one that's going to sit flat enough for you or a small little bouquet uh, i would recommend a, a package of mixed uh, mini gourds would be a great thing for you if that's what you're looking for so i won't be growing them this year because i just don't have room but those last four varieties the east elite the celebration the baby jack mix and the uh, small professional mixed gourds or any small mix of gourds would be a great addition to the garden if you have the space. Generally squash, I find in my climate here in Saskatchewan, Canada, is fairly easy to grow. There are a couple of things that you might find issue with, and the main one I think would be powdery mildew. Uh, so that's something that you could ease, you can um, take care of by A, looking for more powdery mildew resistant varieties, doing crop rotation, and uh, you can spray with, there's a plethora of homemade sprays that you can try or use a, uh, a sulfur mix, which is considered an organic, organic solution to use on your plants. And that will help to 
hold off the powdery mildew spores that can infect your plants. Now, sometimes you can get away if powdery mildew sets in late in the season with uh, your plants still producing and doing well before they it takes the plant. And if it gets in there too soon, then you might wind up losing the whole plant. Another thing some people deal with is uh, squash vine borers. That's not something that I've found yet in my garden. Hopefully I don't anytime soon. There's lots of great videos on how to deal with them, but it sounds like the best way is A, to put some diatomaceous earth around your squash if it's become an issue, and to, um, you can dig the, if you can see where the borer has entered, which it sounds like there's a little hole close to the base of the stem, and there'll be a little bit of frass or like almost like sawdust looking fragments coming out of that hole. And if you just carefully slice into the vine at that point, you can find the little larvae or small kind of worm that's in there. And that's the baby for the, uh, the squash borer and pull it out. And as long as you haven't cut through the whole stem, people say that the uh, vine will recover from that. So you, if you know that's something that's an issue in your garden or in your area, then that's something to be just vigilant about watching out for. When I'm planting my squash, I really pay attention to what my spring has been like. And if we've had a nice warm spring where my soil is warming up really well and quickly, you know, the snow is thawing off of it, frost is coming out fast in the spring, then a lot of my squash, I will just direct sow into hills of warm soil. I can put some plastic over to speed up because it does need nice warm soil and I can protect them with frost blankets if we get a, a cold snap coming, but usually right around that, um, just after my average last frost is when I will direct sow if I'm going to direct sow. I only have a, an average of 110 frost-free growing days here. So anything that's around that 100 days or longer, I'll, I'll sow the seeds in advance, one to two weeks in advance, and just give them that little head start in the house. And those I will do in a peat pot. Squash don't really like to have their roots disturbed. So if you can sow them in a peat pot, and I prefer the larger peat pots, not those little kind of strip, small seedling size trays, then I find that they do really well transplanting in. I just slice the edge of the peat pot because they don't break down very well in my climate. And I make sure that the very top rim of that peat pot is buried down under the soil. So I either cut it off if I need to, if the soil really settled in the pot, or I just mound the soil up over it just to make sure that it's not wicking moisture away from the root zone when I do plant them out in the garden. And then I can just wait until, if I've planted them in the peat pot, then I can just wait until um, my av average last frost or often then I'll even wait another week because I already have them growing and put them in. I don't wanna go much more than three weeks to a month of them growing that way because you don't want the roots to be too big in that peat pot and the plants get big quite quickly too. So you, you don't wanna to have to deal with that. At least I don't wanna to have to deal with that inside. That's how I start my squash and pumpkins. Like I said, I, if they're a shorter, shorter days to maturity variety, it's nice to just plant them straight into the garden. If they're gonna take a bit longer, then I will um, start them just that little bit ahead of time. So I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, my, my picks for the 2023 season and what I'm gonna be growing for my squash and pumpkins, and hopefully I gave you some inspiration of some things to try yourself. Now I'm gonna take this sweet meat and I'm gonna roast it so that I can get the meat out of it or the flesh and puree it and get some baking done. So have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.